Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're going to be showing you how to wire up a float switch to a contactor. And actually, if you stay tuned, we're doing a kind of a mini series here where we're doing three separate videos in three separate configurations that might be useful for your application. So let's jump into it. Okay, so jumping right into things, we've got, uh, this is a very basic contactor setup here. I just wanted to kind of show an example on a drawing. So uh, for those of you that want to kind of refer back to this, this is a good way to kind of, I guess, pause the video or whatever and, and see what the, what the wiring layout is. After this, we're going to go out in the shop and um, hook things up to a live contactor and show you the actual operation so it all makes sense. But we'll start things off with the drawing. So we've got our coil here. Um, we're doing a single float uh, in this instance. So this could be, for example, filling a water tank or emptying a water tank, depending on if you've got a normally open or normally closed float switch. Um, so in this configuration, we're jumpering the coil off of the incoming power from one side. Then we are running the other jumper, essentially, through the float switch, which then engages the coil based on the float's closed condition. So it's a very simple setup, but I know it's very common that people utilize contactors for these scenarios. So we figured we'd just show you guys how to wire one up. So let's head out to the shop. Okay, so here we are around the shop. I've got my float switch. I've got my contactor set up. So let's take a look at the contactor and show you how to wire up a single float switch. Okay, so here we've got our contactor. We've got incoming power going through here. This one, just to bear in mind, is a 220 volt coil. So we've got 120 volts here and 120 volts here. And of course, I do have the power off right now, so I'm at no risk of uh, being shocked. I had to look behind me to make sure. Um, so what we've got set up already is one jumper for this side. So this, this coil has to have power on both sides in order to pull this contactor in. And so we've got one jumper to permanently enable power through this side to this coil. And with our float switch, we're going to, of course, we have two wires and we're gonna basically set a jumper up just like so. So one here and one right here. So now with our float switch, I will turn the power on one second. <laughs> so now in this configuration, this is normally open or a pump down float switch. And so when we raise this switch up, the water level in the tank is high. And so the switch was raised up and the contactors pulled in, sending voltage through the bottom the bottom of the contactor. And once that water level drops, then that goes ahead and shuts off the float switch, which disengages the contactor. So um, the, it, it's kind of a nice, simple way to have that engage and disengage. So just, uh, I guess, a final thoughts on the contactor configuration here. Of course, I mentioned the incoming power going here. Um, and once that contactor pulls in, it is sending power out through the bottom here. Uh, and that's where typically it's going to feed into your pump system, whether it be a control box or uh, feeding directly to the pump. And of course this pulling in or not is what determines whether the pump is on or off being based entirely on the float switch. Of course, the power is disconnected now because I was sticking my fingers in there. So um, hopefully that makes sense. And the drawing that we were able to provide for you um, was helpful. All right, well, that's all we have for today. So be sure to join us for the part two and three of this video series. Uh, learn how to wire up a couple of different configurations. Uh, so thanks again for joining us and we'll catch you next time.